Well, we've got a MOBA and FPS, and now a turn-based strategy game on its way. You can head over to www.smitetactics.com to sign up for the beta as well. But joining me for the second set of the day, I wanted to say third then. I'm a bit ahead of myself. So I have set. Tony once again as an analyst, and uh, F. Dot as my special guest analyst, something I don't get to say too often. You get to do the hard work. All I got to do is answer questions. I feel a little bit lopsided. My mic's on the wrong side, but I want, I want to give I'm you a fist bump just for saying that the chair one does the hard work. <laughs> I mean, hey truth. man, I know it. I do have one beef again. My lower third, please. What was wrong F with it? Period. F period. They please. spell it out. F D O T. It does it all please the time. I'm not the Florida Department of Transportation. Please say the period. That's the main thing. It is right. Just F dot. That's it. F dot. Branding. Second set is going to be Cyclone up against Cringe Crew. Now Cringe Crew in a pretty good position after yesterday. Putting some pretty good wins totally against the top two in this group. Finding a win against Energy and Obey puts Cringe Crew at two points right now. They're in a good spot because Obey they're still at four, so they could sneak on over them if they find the two here against Cyclone. Big thing is though, Tom, two points is not enough to guarantee you're in a good spot right now, especially when Energy and Obey still look good. I mean, not at all, especially if you look at the rest of the pack. You can see uh, energy with their recent win they surge up to seven points and obey's got four of course the good thing that cringe crew does have going for them is that cyclone gg no disrespect to them they don't look all quite there so cringe crew can kind of count on this one to be their three point saving grace but that's a little bit dangerous you can't count your chickens before they hatch because we've seen a number of times i mean hey sanguine's going to super regionals and the big key there as well totally is like oh uh, cyclone looked pretty good yesterday but they were against the top two teams in the group coming into today they've got a chance against cringe crew here but they have to work on what they did yesterday i would say that cyclone looked very confident but almost too confident to a mm. fault i would say they haven't gotten the execution in, in the objectives they've been able to really get the early game plays and the mechanics but they just haven't had the leadership to really group up and on top of that i wasn't a big fan of their team composition just not having enough crowd control well the first two players we're going to look at here is going to be the hunters from each team we're going to have vote mbk up against shaggy shank and f dot these are two players that can do a lot for their team if they get going. It's a big if. Uh, honestly, on both sides of the coin, and speaking to a lot of the different players, Shaggy Shank is one of these guys that will always generally be okay, and then sometimes surges forward mm. into the lead and can create real havoc. Voted BK, on the other hand, he's very aggressive, but a lot of times that aggression doesn't really come from a place where it's warranted. I'm telling you, when you've got that sort of aggression that Vote MBK does, you don't. You've got to make sure you watch your back at the same time and don't get baited in. Vote MBK struggles with that. How do you adapt and adjust that? Absolutely, you have to pick and choose your timing windows. It's so important not to get baited out we saw so many times when he was aggressive in the duel lane just getting baited out and then the jungler would come around taking advantage of his over positioning and as a result that could hurt cyclone heading into the mid game stages of the game you okay. want to be able to make the place but you can't fall in the process callus just appeared on the screen and disappeared there's we looking at vote mbk too. well talking about callus a little bit more you know we saw him play for paradigm at dreamhack as well after had an okay time of things. Obviously, it wasn't the same sort of squad that you wanted to be with Callus. Sure. Callus, Callus though, and, and here's the thing that makes me uh, very happy when it comes to Callus and Hazer, that combination. Uh, especially you guys at home, you've been able to see in, in a Hazer's mind. He's a very knowledgeable guy, right? Mm. Well, Callus is naturally the strategic guy. I always go back to this anecdote from DreamHack. You know the game Othello? It's based on Go, one of the yes. ancient games of strategy. The, you know, warlords would play this game. And, and Callus here, he ran he ran everybody under the table multiple teams would come up and just one by one he would beat them down in, in, in this game and i think just overall strategy this team has a lot of brain power for cyclone gg but the problem is how can they actually bring it to the map well guys a lot of people know him in the scene now let's see what some of the players have to say about him <laughs> callus i i don't i don't know about callus because he didn't do very well at dream huh? in my opinion uh, Cyclone's a new team and Carlos is kind of new player as well. Like I haven't played against him that much. Like I've faced against him in ranked. I've noticed Carlos in ranked before he got picked up by um, Paradigm for Dreamhack. And uh, before that I already told him that he's gonna make it far. And I'm happy that he's on the team now in the SPL. He's got, he's got a point to prove to me. Carlos, he is uh, our shot caller. He will call fights, go for these engages. He does what the team needs him to do, which uh, in EU support isn't quite as common as you think it would be. He's great for calling his cooldowns, etc. He's always calling stuns. He's keeping the team happy, uh, keeping us hyped. So 
yeah, Kalos is definitely a really positive influence on us. He has the best series in the world, for me at least. Aurora isn't anywhere near Kalos, man. Not even <laughs> close. Well, I love what Ataraxia had to say there about Kalos because, you know, he said not a lot of the supports in the scene actually do their job and play for the team. However, that man on your screen there, Amelzi, he does totally. He does, absolutely. And we even heard Emilito talk a little bit about Kalos, saying yeah, he has something to prove to him. We're going to see if that we see Emilzi have anything to prove in this matchup as well. We see that a different style between these two, a more aggressive positioning, I would say, coming out of Kalos, whereas Emilzi likes to just wait for the right timings. He does, and with that as well, I thought this kid goes way back to season one, right? <laughs> the coach days, when he was coach of Team Coast. Tell me you read my mind. I'm sitting here looking at, I'm sitting here looking at Emilzi, and I'm going, man, he's grown he up. looks older, yeah, right? The same thing. We've literally got to watch this kid, and I stress the word kid, grow up in front of our eyes. He was 14 years old at a European land uh, where I, I think it was Adonis traveled overseas and, and hung out with you for one of the first times. And this this kid is walking around with a playbook and, and an iPad with all these graphs and stuff. Before that became the norm. He, he had an app as well that was yeah. on, his, on, his, on his actual tablet that would just like let him move the golf here and fire jet around and things on the screen. I'm like, what is all this about? And I was like, this kid's going hard. But it, he's made it work for his boys. And since you know Princess Tamara left the scene, he has stepped up into that role. He absolutely has. Sometimes the supports have to step in and really take the place of some of the other players that just couldn't cut it. But when it comes down to it, the things that I like about Cyclone and Crenshaw on both sides of the screen, Hindu, is that what I was talking about, Kalos being very strategic minded, mm -hmm. I think Cringe Crew bring a lot of the same. They do. There's a lot of brains on both sides, but unfortunately, uh, I think that where these teams excel in strategy, sometimes they drop down in mechanics. Well, we're into picks and bands now. Terra Banda by Cyclone. Cyclone GG here and talking about this a little bit more. It's very important for both these two teams totally, to actually find a 2-0. I don't think a split is very good for either of them here. No, not at all. Cringe Crew, they did find really important splits in yesterday's yes. events. We saw it against Energy and Obey, which are two teams that performed a little bit better in the online phase. So finding wins against them is so important. Now they still leave themselves with the opportunity for a 2-0 later on. So as long as they can sneak above Obey, who have struggled in that last set against Energy, then this could be the momentum they need to close off today strong and then start tomorrow off very stronger. Well, I agree that both teams absolutely want to shoot for the 2-0 for the three points, to be certain. Cyclone, as they select Athena real quick, they absolutely, one step at a time, they have zero points. Okay. They got zero wins. So sure, they want to shoot for the moon, but Get off the ground first. Following up on that, though, after, I mean, you need to get it. shoot for the moon in one regard, but at the same time, if you really want to try and make it to this next stage, you kind of have to find the 2 0 here because the other games, if you're not winning games, then you've got to get off here right now. It's day two already. Absolutely. You know, like you said, it is day two out of three. And, and for, for me, it's just about taking one game at a time. I've spoken to a lot of players, and, you know, I I, I obviously haven't competed at this level, but just speaking to all the players, you, you very rarely have to look at the large picture. Sometimes it's about, like I said, one game at a time. A lot of focus in the bands from Cyclone GG here. They've banned away two Guardians, taken Athena straight away. A little bit of a hit to Emilzi early on here, Tolly. And it seems that Cringe Crew like this style to take away stuff from Emilzi, but Cringe Crew don't really care about that because they still have the support pick for later on. They have the Kepri if they really want to, and I like the Jingwei Silla pickup. I'm a little bit worried about the Athena selection, though, to be honest with you. Kalos plays very aggressive. He's very good with the Ares and a little bit of the Ymirs as some of the uh, supports in Europe from mm -hmm. yesteryear. And here you can see two selections from Athena. That's not that many, and they haven't won with it just yet. Not only is it a rare god to see, but it's the antithesis of what Kalos usually plays. I'm totally following up on that as well. The Athena pick here may not be what Kalos is looking for, but it is taken away from Cringe Crew, where we have seen a Milzy and we've seen Repicast run this before. Absolutely. you got to take something away that Milzy is comfortable with. And on the flip side, also, Cyclone hasn't been running too much crowd control yesterday, so already they're doing a good job synergizing off of this Athena pick with the Vulcan into the Awilish. One knockup can easily get the pull off, mm -hmm. and immediately Cringe Crow responding with a Scylla for a Milzy, something he's very comfortable with. And the Ice Ice Baby Awilix, we saw it yesterday, had a pretty good game overall yesterday, I want to say. Ice Ice Baby kind of stepped up to the LAN, which is something very reminiscent of Cherio for me in terms of what he managed to bring when he came to his first LAN. But on this Awilix this time round, Plenty of mobility here, Tom. 
Absolutely. And it'll certainly combined with the Vulcan, that's going to be uh, one of the more predominant combinations. Cute little knockup into the into the chain pull. But uh, really, with Cyclone looking here for, uh, I'm really curious to see how they're going to round out their draft. What I see right now doesn't really tell me it's a good draft or a bad draft. It's just sort of hanging out. And I'm, I'm following that one up. You can see the Caravan's coming through. Bologna against Death Walker in the solo lane. Erlang Shen taken out as well. That could have been something they could have looked for in the jungle here, Tolly. It could have been, but probably just taking that away from Zeros more than anything else because Cringe Girl do have the next pick. You don't want to get a solo matchup that he's really comfortable with, but he actually prefers, I would say, the here or the Amaterasu over the Arlong Shen. Well, I'm expecting Cringe Crew, like we said, they're going to get the next pick here. It more than likely, it's going to be a jungler, though. You probably want to save your solo lane in the last pick. I mean, even... See Maybe. It depends. Maybe. I, cause, just because, like, it, when it comes down to it, I think Zeros has transitioned into that role pretty well. And at the end of the day, uh, again, no disrespect to the to the player, but I just have never been impressed with Deathwalker. And this could also be Sobek in the soul lane for Zeros. It's a bit of a flex pick. More than likely, it is going to go to Emilsi since he is so comfortable mm -hmm. with it. And we haven't really seen Sobek coming out of Zeros, but anything could happen at land. It's funny watching Emilsi's Sobek. Amelie seems to be more accurate with charge prey mm -hmm. after a blink rather than just raw charge praise. It's actually really funny to watch. So if that does go to Amelie, expect a blink. He's just got a very good long line. So that's the difference. <laughs> right? It's like a raw snipe. He's the same sort of distance yeah. he can get with a Sobek charge prey as well as a blink with it. So maybe that's all it is. Kabraken, however, that screamed jungle to me. Right, because known for Athena in the jungle, but now switching things up to Kabraken, similar style that Sherio brought in in group number A. So. I like this Guardian jungle selection because you have a lot of burst damage between these two magical gods, Kabraken and Ancel in the 2v2 phases. A Willish has to be so careful with her positioning. We used to see Kabraken come out in the solo lane, but with the uh, takeaway of the red pots, or I'm sorry, the purple pots. I use red oh, pot as a catch-all, oh, oh and no. I get yelled at for it. Oh, no. But that's for the, bad analysis. Remember that. <laughs> the magical power pot. That's probably still wrong. With that gone, uh, Kabraken <laughs> still doesn't make it into the solo lane, so I'm expecting that to be supported. Well, hold up a second. Jibalonke, the first one we've seen so far this tournament, at least Ooh. in this group. Interesting choice here, Tolly. There's a lot of late game hunters that have been taken off the table. Rom, Freya's off the table. Mm. They could have went Kronos or Sol if they really wanted to, but electing to go for the physical side of things, relying on the Vulcan to be the only magical damage carry. And Jibalonke, if he gets off into a great start, start building those stacks early on, I can really expect NBK to start rolling. I talk about that start as well here after. I mean, obviously with the Athena, it's not going to be all that bad for Jibalonke in the laning phase, their wave clay should be pretty e you know, even with this Jingwei Sobek. I would I would expect so. And Shibalanki is able to just sort of sit back and hang out. And that's what Vote NBK does well. He's a great late game hunter. And if he's able to avoid the mid game, mm -hmm. and I say if, if Cringe Crew leave him alone, it's going to be a good look for Cyclone. So call Tolly, who have you got your money on here? Well, Cringe Crew have a really good displacement comp between this tier Sobek into a little nice trap of Kabraken Wall. Scylla Crush and Ama Monster could follow up with a lot of damage. On the side of Cyclone, though, they have a Decent amount of CC with Athena, Vulcan knockup into a Willish, but I got to give a slight edge to Cringe Crew. After where we're going. I think Cringe Crew wins by default. Just I think their composition is very strong, but Cyclone have a Fulcrum on a Wheelish and Shibalanke. If these characters get off, Cyclone can surge ahead. But if everything stays even, I think this is CCs all over again. Very interesting composition for both these two teams. A lot on the line here. Adonis and Agro are standing by to bring us this game. Thank you, Hindu. Cyclone, uh, a lot of trouble from yesterday. We saw the bright spots. We saw Ice Ice Baby specifically really going off, but a lot of trouble closing out the games here. How do you feel coming into this matchup against Cringe Crew? They've got a very good balance of early game and late game pressure. The Wukong and a Willish both going to do very well in the early game, yeah. and then you can transition, just hand the ball off to your Vulcan, to your Jibalanke, let them carry you and run with the game. I have to say, though, I still have so many question marks for Vote MBK. We saw him just like, I, I heard him yelling of two other hunters, right, <laughs> across the player desks, telling them to fight him. And then he gets baited, caught out. But we saw mechanically how good he, how good he was in some of those team fights. Ice forced to go purification. And Suku. And Suku. That's 46 huge. seconds before minion spawn. I'm surprised. I don't know if he had to go Suku there. Maybe he leveled it up before he got plucked and then he did use yeah. purification anyways. But that is huge. Now that early pressure that uh, that Cyclone could have had is going to be a lot less, at least in the first few minutes, because it's going to put Cyclone so far behind in clearing their buffs and then getting to mid camps. Wukong there 
could actually go a Wrath, though, I think, if Deathwalker and Ice uh, want to switch it up. You can see Wukong still sitting in base, and yeah, he's going to go that Wrath. I, I kind of like this. Yeah, great call. Just sitting there. Maybe if he was there, maybe he gives a little bit of support mm -hmm. to Ice, and he doesn't isn't forced to buy Suku, but instead it stays in base, gets the Wrath like you mentioned. This is definitely because of that early pressure that that Cyclone was going to lose. I like the pickup here by Deathwalker. Probably wanted to go to that teleport, especially to match up against the tier. And it doesn't seem like Cringe Crew are in a position to invade. Actually, look at this start from them. Cringe Crew starting three on the blue buff. They've rotated their mid laner over. We have not seen this start come out in SPL. Usually you do, you rotate your mid laner over whenever you're the one being scared of getting invaded. So, but I don't think that there's any way they were going to get invaded with the, no. the sort of start. Oh, it's oh okay. Because Caro started Sikkim. Did you see that? He just used Sikkim. Didn't buy Crash. That's what it was. Right off the bat, so the the clear on the red buff would have been really really slow. So instead, of setting him over and splitting it up this way. Two very interesting adaptations to early aggression. And this, I mean, this is telltale sign of a high level team. Honestly, making those quick adaptations on both sides. Deathwalker with the Wrath, and now obviously uh, the new start coming out from Caro there. Ice is not delaying though. They do have that Wrath, and they're already setting up to invade on the right hand side cyclone off to a decent start right now a couple hundred gold ahead because of this and i like the fact that wolfie's getting another wave by himself in the middle lane you want we talk about it all the time with characters like both Vulcan and Scylla, you want to accelerate to their late game. You want to get them to the big items as fast as you possibly can. And by letting him get those solo waves, he's going to get there faster than Scylla will. And Ice, uh, an awkward start. He actually hasn't even taken a trip to the mid lane yet. You don't see that too often unless Adapting's ganking you in the solo lane. Left-hand side, though, Cyclone on the Shablanke. Got to be feeling good. Having lane pressure against a Jingwei Sobek, not something you see too often. Well, you talked about the sort of mentality that Vote NBK has and how he wants other hunters to fight him. And maybe this is Hazer and the rest of the boys saying, <laughs> we're going to put you on something that you can't get baited on. You cannot fight early with Gibalanke. And we'll just let you get to that point of the game where you can make a huge impact in the late game like he likes to do. So we'll see if he's able to kind of calm mm -hmm. it down in this laning phase. He's going to have to be very careful because his lane clear is obviously not the strong suit of Gibalanke. It's the late game team fight potential, both with that ultimate and the longer range autos you get when you use it. And obviously trying to get some stacks early. Obviously, uh, each kill going to give him five power to that passive, stacking up to 30 with six. But it's very hard to get for uh, Jablanca to get those kills in the early game. Ice hitting level five pretty early right now. Really good farming coming out from him. This is not something you see when you're forced to go into an ability that is not fast clear early on. And it doesn't seem like Cyclone really want to force anything just yet. Ice is peeking over, you can see, just seeing through the walls there, noticing if there's any possibility to gank that left-hand side. We saw him go off yesterday, and we'll have to see. We're going to definitely be keeping our eye on him, especially with the sort of composition that Cyclone have drafted. We mentioned it during whenever we first got the cast mm -hmm. here. It's going to be up to him and Sun Wukong to kind of control the game on that right side of the map long enough for Vulcan and Jibalanke to come in and make that impact in the mid to late game. How is Ice Ice going to be able to transition that? We saw him do great, do a great job on Fenrir, yeah. have, get a big lead for his team, and then try to hand it off, but his team <laughs> dropped the ball. I mean, there was no one there. I think that was Pretty Prime and Variety combining to steal his backpack. Yes. <laughs> that was pretty. That was a pretty brutal game. I actually really liked the Awelix game he brought out. I, I think it was the game after that. Mm -hmm. uh, his team, again, I don't think was able to translate properly off the mechanical skill we saw from him. Uh, but I, I would like to see Cyclone get aggressive early here. They have the Athena, they have the Jablanke, they have those double globals in the dual lane that Cringe Crew aren't really going to be able to match. And obviously that Awelix, the early game pressure, I feel like this needs to happen. We're sitting at three minutes, three and a half minutes basically right now and still no player damage of any sort of significance. No. It's only been a vote MBK getting some uh, poke in that duo lane. But you're right, this is the time where I'd like to see Cyclone start to play aggressive. Ooh. You see Ice Ice is going to try and set something up on the solo side. A lot of pressure. Not going to come to fruition there. And obviously with the knock up from Wukong there, it's a pretty good combo for a Wheelix to be near there. Pluck onto Kallus here. And oh, and he's completely walled off. I'm a monster way off. Carol does not connect it. And now Ice has rotated in as well. Four to four right now. No one's going to die. No one under half health. I don't know what I just saw. Caro's got to use that ultimate early if he's going to use it while the CC chain is still going on. Instead, he tries to hold it for no reason. Okay, so in the early game, Asilla, 
resets are just a thing that happens if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. You're using that ultimate for, for straight damage. up damage. In the late game, you want to play for the resets a little bit more. But in the early game, you are just using it for damage. And he needed to use it if they wanted to kill Kalas there. Instead, the whole fight kind of goes awry because of that missed ultimate. Kalas sneaks around the server room and is able to get towards his team. Left hand side, Shaggy in a little bit of trouble. But off of that fight on the right, the right mid harpies, uh, Cyclone didn't really burn too many ults. They just walk straight in, steal that red buff, get the back harpies as well off to a great start about a 200 gold lead so it's nothing significant just yet uh still though big misplay coming out of care and we saw that from from day one uh, mm. i think when they opening its energy was the same kind of issue a lot of missed ultimates on the scylla not really combining with this team properly plus not use you'll see him use the crush i'm a monster combination but you want to be blowing up the crush before the i'm a mm -hmm. monster hits because then you can get the resets it's guaranteed with the nausea the extra damage but we saw him time and time again getting the kill with the crush it's not a big deal but it could be a game turning thing to get that reset in the middle of a fight towards the mid to late game. So it, it's uh, so rhythm yeah. oriented. I mean, I guess that's gotta be a hard decision because you get the penetration once it's max two. True. So it is that hard kind of decision to make. Do I go for the reset? Do I go for the extra damage? I'm a monster, but you definitely can't just not connect those ultimates. This is a big, this is a huge match for Cringe Crew. They split with both Obey and Energy. I mean, if they 2-0 here, they're they're up in contention for Super Regionals. Both teams, if they get a 2-0 here, they're they're right yeah, in a really, too. really good spot. Cyclone, even though they didn't find a win in day one, if they can boost themselves to three points here, that puts them ahead of Cringe Crew all of a sudden, who had started off so well. So you're right. And when you pick Scylla, it's not like picking Isis, where you're you've got a couple different win conditions. When you pick Scylla, you're picking to win through the Scylla. That is your job when you're playing Scylla. And if you're not going to hit those ultimates, you're probably not going to end up winning. It's uh, going to have to be uh, done a little bit better. Deathwalker, though, doing a good job on the right-hand side. We saw him kind of take a peek at those back harpies. So uh, not something you see too often, a uh, Wukong really able to get this far ahead. Callus, a little bit caught out there. He, you see, you saw the camera. He's like, oh, three people, I'm out. Just Later. dashes away. I'm, I'm getting out before None I of this. get pulled by Emilzi, who's been on point with the charge praise thus far. Uh, the late game potential for both of these teams is very strong. We've talked a lot about the Vulcan and Gibalanke combination, but of course, Scylla is going to do a ton of work in the late game. Mm -hmm. Jingwei is well, particularly potent whenever she gets to late game. The problem is, is that Kabraken can kind of get abused whenever you get enough damage online to ignore his tank. He's got to stay relevant here. Taunt onto a Z, and there's the ultimate from Jablanke as well. Good wall coming out. The ultimate hits two, and the pool as well. Ice going for a Z now turning his attention over to zeros. And once again, that four on four right, hard, uh, right side mid harpies. No one dies, no one under half health. Really solid plays from both teams. They're really displacing that team fight. I love the ultimate from Wolfie, immediately throwing it over the wall just to peel by damage, making sure everyone's a little bit too low to feel comfortable. But again, where's the ultimate from Caro? The setup was there from Emil Z, it was perfect. You bait call us in, you don't want to dash taunt in that sort of scenario because there was no follow up onto Emil Z. And then you immediately get plucked into Kabraken and into Scylla but they, they don't commit. And it's a repeat scenario. The fight on the right-hand side, so much invested, but Cyclone are pretty healthy. They're going to take that red buff. Voting BK just zoning out Shaggy in the meantime, and Cringe Crew walk by, see the buff's gone. Teleport from Zeros, though. He is going to go over the wall, there. looking for ice. Early purification wasn't needed, but was a little bit worried that he was lined up for it. Exactly, the slow kind of baiting ice ice into that purification. But the teleport being down, Definitely helps out Cyclone overall because, like we mentioned earlier, Deathwalker doesn't have that teleport. He doesn't have that rotation ability. I mean, look at the gold difference, too. Somehow, Deathwalker has got off to a great start. And not only did we see him setting up for those invades that, you know, the buffs weren't there, but already a 500 gold lead against a tier with teleport? That's not supposed to happen. I mean, both of these solo laners are going to be a point of contention here. Zero's just moving. Hold that Rappy. thought. Kalos gets caught by a perfect ultimate from Repikos. Hey, Kara Walton. And now he's going to use it to hit red. Hey. He hit, he, he hit something. He hit something. Voting BK is going to ult as well. Cyclone trying to re-engage. The Vulcan ult connects with the Mealzy. And Carol's pulled back in by Ice. He answers back now. Reppy's in a bad spot. The knockup Ice somehow gets away. But Shaggy's so deep. Perfect. Air strike. Step. It doesn't connect. And now Shaggy's in a bad spot. Deathwalker's rotation finishes him off. It's going to be two kills for Cyclone. What a play by Ice Ice Baby. Immediately uses the feather step whenever he hears the air strike command go off. And this kid's insane. all the damage. He he is playing out of his mind his first time here at land. Kills Caro, pulls him back in, almost pulled him back into the Vulcan ultimate, which would have been a crazy play. <laughs> Still able close. to pick up the kill. 
Feather steps the ult, then Shaggy Shang's got nowhere to go. Perfect rotation by Deathwalker, picks him up in the middle lane, and Cyclone's you, in the lead. You know, we we heard the, you heard you watched the King Kennet video, right? I did. And we heard Ice say, Adapting's the second best jungler. Now I'm not saying, Adapting is uh, still the yeah. best jungler, Hold but Ice is, Definitely making a name for himself. I don't know what's going to happen with him at the by the end of this season, but next season, he's going to be highly sought after, I think, by a lot of top European teams. Without a doubt, the skill is there. I wonder what the uh, what the sort of personality is like, though. You never know if they're no just idea. having some fun, you know, yeah. in those sorts of videos, or, you know, players that are lesser known but have great mechanical skills sometimes have that sort of ego aura about them. It's kind of tough to contain them sometimes. But by all accounts, he's a great teammate and works very well with Cyclone, and you're right. The mechanical skill is obviously there. And, I mean, he's been playing competitive for a while in the Challenger Cup. Very similar to Wolfie. Uh, I think they've actually been on multiple teams together before, but have never really been able to break out into the SPL. Obviously, Wolfie in that mid lane subbed a little bit for Fnatic in the past season and a half, maybe, but uh, not really able to make it onto the, the main stage as a starter. Now, though, I mean, these guys, they made it into the SPL. Uh, obviously, very rough. They are four or five rookies, basically. The only one with SPL experience in the past was vote in BK, mm -hmm. but the other four have really shown up with their individual skill, still just a little bit lacking in that cohesion. You can see sometimes you're right, the cohesion just a little bit off the mark with the individual plays between Wolfie and Ice Ice Baby together, vote NBK able to take a boxing fight with anybody, regardless of if he should or not, and that's a different question, but he can definitely willingly trade out with any ADC in the world right now. And then Deathwalker had a rough day yesterday. For sure. Maybe the frenzy purchase wasn't his best option, but it's looked really, really <laughs> great thus far today. Okay, okay Ice. <laughs> Hey, Remember man. when we saw Callus like peek around a quarter C3 and just immediately run away? Ice is like, yo, let me get the speed buff real quick. Uh, doesn't work, though. Would have been a hot play, man. And that's one of those things that if he's able to make that play, yeah. that's a tilt That's a tilt moment for You're a mad. character like Repikaz. You're like, really? There were four of us and he just stole that with a three? Come oh, on. Oh, vote. Oh, bad spot. He's going to be caught. He's going to dash in to Cringe Crew there. I'm a monster off the mark again. Ice in the fact, but he gets rooted. The ultimate from Vulcan. It's not going to connect onto any key targets. And now Cyclone's got to get out. They're all split up. Shaggy Shank dives into the tier two, but the Athena ult going to dissuade him from diving. Deathwalker on the side. Somehow, no one's died in this fight just yet, but that's not going to last for too long. Deathwalker overstays his welcome. All five men versus Cringe Crew there, and they're going to be able to get the red buff off of that as well. I can't believe that was only one kill for Cringe Crew. A perfect engage by Repikos catches out Vote NBK, positioning not where you want to be up against that. The Kabrakan pick Again. really showing off right now why it fits so well, because they don't have anyone to get up and over these walls except for Ice Ice. Cringe Crew have started the Gold Fury. Cyclone don't want to give this up for free, but it's already done. Zero's on zone duty. Isis still hanging around, and Zero's is in a bad spot. Surrounded by three right now. Is going to be able to get out for now. Ice really looks like he wants to keep up this fight. He does have Gravity Surge available, but I don't think CC are going to ever give him the chance to find that knockup. He's looking, he might look for it over the wall. Instead, going to dash in and take a ton Brutal. of damage. Welcome to the mid lane, Ice. Karo's, this is his lane. And honestly, Karo has not hit ultimates, but the Sikkims have been on point. We saw there in that last engagement. Ice looped around behind him, the quick 180. He mm -hmm. got the Sikkim, and then he can't feather step off of that. He is rooted in place, and so Ice wasn't able to make any of those highlight plays. Something to think about. I mean, if I'm Karo, I'm looking to save that Sikkim for Ice in every situation. It shuts him down really hard, as well as it does a great job of shutting down Gibalanke, Vulcan, even Deathwalker and Kalas. I mean, that Sikkim's going to be a huge part. And, you know, I made a big stink about making sure you're hitting mm -hmm. your ultimates on Scylla, and deservedly so, but Sikkim is almost as important, if not equally important, it's especially whenever you're get leveling it up to max level and yeah, gets that extra passive ability route. where you can get up to two more targets, you can root three people. A three-man root into a three-man crush wins you a team fight instantly, basically. Even if you're forcing a relic, that's that's a one team fight if you play it correctly. So it's going to be very important for Caro. If his ultimates are off the mark, that sucks, and it's going to be harder mm -hmm. for his cringe crew to do what they want to do. But as long as his Sikkims are on point, they'll at least have something to work off. Well, of. I do think Caro is in for a long game based on how this one's been going so far. With the Gold Fury, cringe crew have taken the lead over Cyclone ever so slightly, about 800. But there are late game carries, honestly, on both teams. We've talked about it. I I think it's going to be you know voting BK versus Shaggy Shank and Wolfie versus Caro late game. Those are going to have to be the two key players and I we're seeing inconsistency from voting BK and Caro but
but Shaggy Shake and Wolfie, for the most point, have been, honestly, I mean, they've been performing great this LAN. I totally agree with that. Wolfie's looked very good thus far. Just missed on a couple of key ultimates while still hitting at least someone. I don't think he's whiffed one quite yet. Ooh, Kalos. Kalos here looking at the speed buff. Everyone ditched him, man. His whole team's gone. He's still alive for now. Ice didn't give him up, and Kalos is going to be able to reset, but now Cyclone a little bit overextended. Bona BK's ultimate, and there's another ult from Karo off the mark, but I think CC were just trying to disengage at that point. And again, another fight on this right-hand side of the map after that speed buff invade by Ice results in zero kills. No one seems to be able to, to combine everything together to secure these. These look like two teams who are the third and fourth Seats. They look Coming unsure in. about what they want to do. Exactly. We saw Cringe Crew yesterday, the first the first game up against Energy, the first game of the, the weekend, look like they were completely intimidated. But now they're start they looked a little better. Now they're Callus. going back to it. And he's gonna get stunned. Oh, he's absolutely shredded. Trying to get out of trimmers. It's not gonna work. Reppy finds him and left hand side. Ice has been forced out, but they did get a Mulesy's ult for it. Cringe crew still grouped up here in this mid. They look like they want to siege. And oh, Ice finds Carol left by himself in mid! Where did he go? I mean, the Hydra's proc after the Feather Step, the Blink coming into big play, and I don't think Ice had been able to use that Blink no. quite yet, so you kind of get lulled to sleep. You don't realize that it's there. Someone I mean, probably called it out, but it, you don't, you haven't seen it yet, so you don't respect it, and Kara pays for the disrespect. I mean, he's level 14. He had to have bought that Blink in the last couple minutes, and now Ice is setting up for Shaggy. Gravity Surge is available, and there it is, plucked in. Feather Step, not gonna be good, but Shaggy, he's gonna be short of his tower. Very early Sanctuary. Ice really wants this kill. He's diving incredibly deep. Good knockup, better Feather Step. Couple more hits, Ice can't fight it. The jukes are great from Shaggy, fighting around the gust, and Reppy comes to save the day. Now Vote trying to back there, but may have been caught out. Zeros is still here, but he doesn't want to chase any deeper. Ice trying to make the big plays that he likes to do, but that, that was time, red. just a little bit too much. That that was red. He saw blood, did not respect the rotation coming out. No wards, honestly, for Cyclone. On that left-hand side of the map at the time, he had he had no idea about where anyone was. And just uh, a little bit of overextension, maybe trying to uh, get things rolling in this early game. With, I mean, without a doubt, the rest of the team was just like, okay, Ice, you go. <laughs> you go try and get that kill. We we'll, saw what you did on the Finrear. Right. Maybe you'll do the same on the Wheelix. We'll back up here. And I'm surprised that we see the, the reinforced Greaves on Emilzy here. I really would have liked to see them on Kalos as well. I mean, he's going to get CC chained for days. It's going to be lots of abilities coming in. The the passive on Reinforce is going to do so well up against Tremors, not going to be able to uh, do quite as mm -hmm. much damage because it'll stack the passive very quickly. Instantly. I really feel uh, we've seen how much of the focus Kalos has been thus far, getting plucked consistently, getting ulted by Repikos, rooted by Karo right afterwards. I really would have liked to see him go for the more defensive op option as opposed to the trap. I'm just surprised he only has two deaths, to be honest, yes. with how often Repikos has walled him off from the rest of his team, but he's been managing to stay alive. Bota BK, oh, this is a call for the mid. They're going to go for a Mealzy. He's going to take a little bit of poke, but I mean, they were clearly looking for Karo in that spot. They wanted to... Ice Ice almost used the ultimate Close. there on Amilzy, but he's just so tanky. He still had the Not dash, still had the ultimate. There's no way they have enough damage. And now that that Gibalanke ultimate is down, Cringe Crew are going to be looking at the Gold Fury here. They're, they were trying to just sneak it, but now it's a bait. You can see Kallus is rotating around the corner, and it's going to be the same story. The wall is going to come out, but a quick dash from Kallus. Amilzy is lined up at the knockup. It's going to help him out for a second. Walled off, body blocked completely. Still no ult from Karo just yet. Kallus is still alive, trying to get the ult off, and he does it in time. Zeros finds the kill. Shaggy's getting forced out in the back line while Vote is free casting his basics on the side. Zeros has to ult away. He was a little bit overextended. And Ice finds the knockup, but no gravity surge available. He'd already used it to force out Shaggy Shank and Vote NBK being healthy and throwing the autos down. One of the major reasons why Cringe Crew weren't able to keep pushing down that fight. And Karo just had, he, lo he looks. He saved it. He's got to just be more loose with the ultimates. Just use it that right there. I mean, you know what yeah, I mean? That's, that's one of the things. Everyone wants to get that big reset. They feel like they're more impactful, but the ult at the, just the base damage on the ult is still incredible. You don't have to get the kill. Exactly, and it, I don't know. I mean, Karo's been to land, right? He was yeah. at Super Regionals last year with London yes. Conspiracy, I believe. So you would expect Basically him to- same lineup. Exactly, so you, you'd expect him to be a little bit more comfortable than he's looking. And I don't, you know, I don't want to put so much focus on him because he has been playing well with the roots, like you mentioned, and he's been there for the follow-up, only uh, got picked off that one time, I believe, by Ice, but 
still, as we get into this later game, he's got to be on point with these ultimates. We saw him on Scylla yesterday, and he had like 400 damage at level at 17 Taunt. minutes. Oh, Emilzy, real low, surrounded by five. He's just gone. He had no time to react there. Great CC chain coming out from Cyclone, and now with that kill, they have an opportunity to go for this Gold Fury. It seems like Cyclone are, are, are definitely intending to do it, but they're, they're not committing to a call just yet. That pick brought to you by Ward Coverage for Cyclone. Just no idea where anyone was, and Emilzy had nothing. Now they're going to be starting up this Gold Fury, getting a little bit low. I love the turret positioning from Wolfie. Some, you do not want to put him in the Gold Fury pit because if you call to disengage, the turret will keep the Gold Fury leash and it can be there, really oh, awkward to Cyclone are committing to this and Zero is committing as well over the top and he's going to look for two, but he's CC'd bad spot. The ultimate from the Vulcan connects right and Carol finds it, resets one, hits Kallus as well. Wolfie answers back, but Carol pushes forward into Deathwalker. Now trying to get away and he does find the Sikkim again, but here comes Ice, the blink is good. The wall from Reppy keeps him on the opposite side though. It's gonna be a disengage from both teams, one for one. There we go, Caro, that's what Finds I'm talking it. about. Hits Finds the second the raw two. Ult over the wall, insta kills, vote, then puts the damage onto Kalas. He doesn't fall, but then the perfect sanctuary after the blink in by Ice. That's what we're looking for. That's why you pick Scylla. That fight was all Cyclone until Caro turned it around instantly. And now, I mean, this is a neck and neck battle. Cringe Crew got the first Gold Fury, and that's the only lead they've really been able to keep. It's about 2,000 gold, a little bit less, 1,700. And five to six in kills, 20 minutes in. I mean, one fight, I want to say, is going to break this out. This is going to take a couple fights from a team to really gain control of this game. And it's because of how much damage they have on each side. Even if you pick off Caro, you still got to worry about Shaggy Shank and Repikos at this point in the game. Even if you pick off Ice, you've still got to worry about Wolfie in Vote NBK. The the, the, there's a lot of CC on both teams. There's a lot of damage on both teams. The only thing that both teams are lacking that we've seen a lot of during these group stage lands is the sustain. There's yeah. really no sort of heals. In fact, you don't even see, uh, you only there's see one meditation on the side of Cyclone and one on the side of Cringe Crew, not electing for that sustain, but they've got stuff in every other aspect. And actually both supports going the same style right now. Both have the shell, both have the meditation, definitely looking for those extended engagements and to keep their uh, team alive, I, I think after those, those big mage ult Ultimates coming out from both squads and even the towers. I mean, it's uh, we have had a single tower in mid lane at 21 minutes and one gold fury. None of these, neither of these teams want to make mistakes. Even the levels are low, but it's not for lack of fighting. We've seen a lot of skirmishing and just not as many kills as you would expect. Now Cyclone wants the gold fury. Let's listen into cringe crew as they try and fight this. I have they're all going out. Uh, okay. We can't. Nah. Can we? Pressure? Sure. I, I think, think we can, so. right? No. They're gonna see us. Alright, push mid then. Push did they hawk that? Yeah, they did. Okay. I don't know. I want to group with you. Yeah, come mid. Push mid, push mid. How much gold are people sitting on right now? Look for the bus. Does anyone have no Only 900, it's fine. He has speed, so. I don't think. Okay. I just reset. Like, we have a lot of gold yeah, right okay, now. Yeah, okay, back. Just all of them. This blew up. Get what's on the FG right now. Are you getting hot for it, by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Willing is chasing yeah. me. Full water. Are you fine? We might need to help him. Yeah, it's fine. That was the Steel Series listen in for Cringe Crew there, but I'm not even talking about them. Cyclone had a lot of trouble yesterday getting Gold Furies and not getting out perfect from them this time you look in the smite textbook of you know what you're supposed to do in competitive play and <laughs> how do you get a gold fury in front of five members of the enemy team you wrath it you turn you get the hell out with sprint and you don't give anything up they lost a red buff for that gold fury perfect perfect job by cyclone i made them i mentioned that these two teams looked like the bottom two teams coming in earlier because of the sloppiness of play that's gone now both teams looking much more comfortable I, awesome play there i mean shout outs to cyclone as a whole really i mean i talked to them this morning too they they went back they watched a lot they watched all the vods they watched all the picks and bans they talked about their game they talked about their mistakes uh vote mbk i mean we've seen him get caught out once i mean the all four games yesterday it was like five times by now he's playing very passively on a on a guide you're supposed to on this jablanke and that's what you want whenever you're kind of resetting in this land environment you get a night to just kind of calm down mm -hmm. look at what you did wrong who can make the best adjustments we've seen this one before and again cal has flipped into repikos the wall i've seen this three times and Carol finally hits the ult but Kallus a little bit too tanky on the other side Zero's just zoning and that's the kill Cringe Crew was looking for since minute four.
Someone's got to break those walls down for Kalas there. It was just left. It's yeah. only it's only three auto attacks now after the change to Kabrakin a little bit ago. Someone's got to be there. Wolfie with the ranged auto attacks. Or someone just create a hole for him to go through. Instead, he just got taken to Pound Town and underneath those servers. I, we've actually seen that play three times this game. That was the first time Kalas was picked off. Caro hit his ultimate as well very early on. Wasn't looking for the reset, but I mean, Zeros was zoning it, and it was hard for them. They couldn't make a decision. Ice Baby looping around this corner right now and Cyclone now on their back foots. They did get that gold to even up the gold here, excuse me, to even up the, the gold lead that Cringe Crew had got earlier. But it doesn't seem like Cringe Crew want to want to push the issue. They're just going to go back to farming. I'm, this has actually been an incredibly extended laning phase. It, it really has been. And it, a ton of fights with only 12 kills is pretty crazy at this point in the game. But once once Deathwalker comes to these fights, I think it's going to be a big change for Cyclone, just because you got to have someone behind the rest of the team mm -hmm. there to disrupt all the damage. Instead, everyone Shaggy. was zoned out by the walls. Shaggy, surprise. Featherstep's going to be good. And Shaggy's wasting no time. Oh, actually, he lands straight into Kallus and forced to purify. Got his ult as well. Big win. Nothing wasted from Cyclone there. Shaggy read like a book by Kallus. He knew exactly where he was going to land. There's the, the chess strategy uh, sort of experience that FDOT always talks about with Kallus, knowing exactly where Shaggy was going to land. Yes, you get the ultimate for free, but that wouldn't have been a huge win overall. That ultimate doesn't have the longest cooldown, and you can use it for a lot of different ways. It doesn't hurt. Jingwei too much, but that purification being down, that's a big deal. Big group up on the left-hand side, four on four. Both solo laners are on the right, but TP is available for zeros. Again, no TP picked up for Cyclone. It was the sprint in the wrath that Deathwalker was forced into, but it doesn't look like Cringe Crew will even need to worry about it. They're just going to walk, take that tier one for free. That's their third of the game. Very surprised to see the sprint on uh, Deathwalker here instead of Kalas. I mean, usually it's a support getting the two supporty actives and then the solo laner usually will get meditation nowadays thanks yeah. to Divio's it's usually wrath and teleport but getting that sprint onto Deathwalker you usually are going to be using that a little bit too selfishly if you're using it on the solo laner because a lot of times you'll poke someone out and they'll be running away and it's best to just turn and help the mm -hmm. team but maybe he'll be incentivized to pop the sprint and chase him down whereas it could better help the team however the last time we saw him use it was a perfect execution it was the gold fury. at the gold fury yep. run away getting his team out of there and now cringe crew have really been the primary aggressors we haven't really seen cyclone force anything uh, outside of a couple taunts from callus in the mid lane and ice ice baby looping around for those ganks onto shaggy shank but really they've been reacting to Emilzi, and, and it's it's hard for callus on this athena to do anything Refi's gonna find alt. vote bk and this is trouble Perfect ult blocks him off. Now Vote has to pop the ultimate, but he looks like he's going to get away. Emilzi's still chasing him down, but the sprint's going to help out. Caro. Caro's dying in the back line One right shot. now. Oh, the peel from Emilzi straight into Ice, though, waiting for him on the other side. Ice finds the pick. Repikots can't chase. He doesn't have a blink anymore. And now Cyclone fighting Double back time. into this one. The two-man taunt, but no follow-up. Wolfie just has to retreat. Here comes Short the ultimate, off. but it's a little bit late. Shaggy Big damage. Living with 1 HP. Deathwalker finishes him off. Now it's Emilzi trying to pick up Kalas, but he doesn't have enough damage. Perfect engage by Cringe Crew, except for the fact that there was no one close enough to follow up. Two for zero. Repi blinks, but again, he's so displayed. He was already ahead of his team going for that. Uh, and voting BK, that's twice now getting caught in a very similar position, but great reaction time there. The second he saw the stun come out, he pops his three, gets that CC immunity, and just his repositioning as well. He doesn't, he doesn't reposition the Rising Jaguar towards the lane. It was towards his team. Exactly. Having the presence of mind in those sort of high-pressure situations to look at your your mini map and know exactly where your team is it is 99 percent of the time it's better to run to your team than it is to run away and that time it does it perfectly caro just got caught out trying to follow up use both relics i think but it wasn't enough still the casualty in that fight honestly i could have i would have i i 100 percent believe his mini map was turned off yesterday i think he found the button to enable it again Great, I mean, uh, you know, zero, one, and five, but just much better positioning. Gold flank. Fury was picked up, and look at this. This is a real awkward flank from Cyclone. Caro's got nowhere to go because he doesn't have purification, and he do and so he's got no way to get away from Ice Ice Baby. He can't use Sentinel. He gets pulled back. He can't turn around. He gets pulled back by the knockup, and he can't just stand there because he takes too much damage from the Feather Step. It's what do you do? You have to use the ultimate to get away, but instead, Ice Ice Baby lets him go because the rest of his team 
uh, the rest of Cringe Crew understands that Caro is in a tough spot, immediately comes back to him. Caro's uh, damage, I would say overall, has been lacking. I mean, we're, we're not saying the ults connect a lot, but now he's got the Obsidian Shard finished, uh, fully stacked Book of Thoth as well, and also the Rod of Tahuti is up next. That's when Scylla really becomes a monster. I really, oh, nice. What? She becomes a monster. What? I'm a monster is the name of her ultimate. That was good. They're better when you don't no, bring attention to that them. that was good. It was smooth, and then you Solid. brought attention to it. You All ruined right, it. I, I see Deathwalker you. could be a, a little ruined, too, on the right-hand side, but he's going to be fine. Uh, we see all of Cringe Crew rotating over. All right, so before I got sidetracked by your pun, I was going to say I would have liked to see the bests build on Scylla here, going for the, the helm into the boots directly into the Soul Reaver. I yes. was talking to the Eager guys, and they say that... It, most team fights are won in the first rotation of abilities, mm -hmm. which definitely is true most of the time. Especially for Scylla. Exactly. So if he can just one-shot that uh, uh, Athena off the pluck initiation, it could be really good for them. Instead, goes for the book. Extra damage overall, but not as quite as good. Bling, go! Two members caught. They are going to get over the wall, and there it is. They break it. Votemi K gets out, but on the right-hand side, the ult connects from the Vulcan. Not enough damage, though. Zero still trying to zone, but he's surrounded by four. He's not getting zoned. He's getting picked off. He's got to use that ult over the wall, and because of that, it's going to be a reset. Still, Cringe Crew, they are the aggressors. Reppy's getting these great ultimates off, but Cyclone always make sure to reposition themselves in those situations. Unfortunate there for Reppy. He actually broke his own wall. Now Emil's cutting the top spot. There's the gravity surge. Pulled back Everything. in. He's damaged with I'm a monster. Crush. He got one, and it is going to be a reset. Cringe Crew pushing forward. Left-hand side. Wolfie very low as well. Sanctuary lasts long enough. Shaggy finds the kill, but Cringe Crew find two picks. Great job baiting Caro. Emilzy there. Caro wants Looking to go for aggressive. It. Looking for the root, but with the wing blade, nope. the suku, and the speed buff, no way he's going to catch up to that very quick Awilish. Great fight there from both teams. It looked like a great engage, but it was actually Rappy breaking down his own wall, which let uh, Cyclone escape, but then baiting Emilzy. Perfect follow-up off the initiation onto Emilzy. Fire Giant started by Cringe Crew, but they don't have their front line. Emilzy was picked off. Fire Giant getting low. No Wrath available. Vote BK in the middle of this. Ice as well is taken out. What? Talus' kill. ult has found Caro. Fire Giant. It is secured, but it doesn't matter. Almost their whole team is dead. Zeros answers back. Shaggy and Zeros last two alive. But, I mean, that's that's a massive win for Cyclone. They don't steal the Fire Giant, but they knock it off of three players. Love the play from Ice and Kalos working together there. You see the defender of Olympus being channeled onto him as he's riding around with Suku. Jumps in at the perfect time. It insta-kills Repikos. They pick up Caro as well. Yes, they do lose the Fire Giant, but when you were staring four people in the mouth of Fire Giant, mm -hmm. you're in a much worse spot. And it's two of the worst characters you could have with that fire. I'd rather see it on every other character on Cringe Crew, except for the solo laner and the support. And then maybe Caro? Maybe Caro. Maybe Caro? Yeah, maybe Caro. He doesn't have Rod of just yet, but I mean, that was really surprising that Cringe Crew went for that, honestly. They lost Emilzy. Refi was low health. He, was kind, he wasn't tanking it up, but still, those pools got to be dangerous when you have that Root and Taunt coming out of Athena and a Wheelish. Well, this stage of the game, a Wheelish is not going to be nearly as effective as she was in the early stages, and so you kind of get baited into a, yeah, we're not worried that a Wheelix is still up. Uh -huh. She's not going to do as much damage. Oh, wait, Defender of Olympus still does a million damage this time in the game. It's going to be tough. Shaggy going to be taunted out here, taking a lot of damage in the knockup as well. I don't think he has purification. He's going to get plucked back in, and Wolfie finds it. Shaggy way overextended. Emilzy was with him, but just not enough to peel four players a Cyclone. And you said it. You said you don't want fire on Shaggy. I think Cyclone agrees with you. They don't want to see it, man. No reason to worry about it now. I mean, Shaggy why was he there, though? Yeah, no... It that's where they were going to be pushing. That's where Cringe Crew was going to be pushing once the Fire Giant, w once everyone had respawned, and they were able to push with that fire. But now you don't have it because you were there a little bit too early. You'd like to see your teammates literally just wait for you. Just wait right there. Just stand by the Gold Fury and wait for us. Instead, Shaggy goes for the boars, gets picked off. The rest of Cyclone knew where they were going to be, and now they're sitting on Look a 4,000 gold lead. I mean, I think Cyclone of yesterday might have went for the Phoenix. Crazy as it sounds, that's just how they were playing. But now, as a unit, they take that tier two. Now starting up the Gold Fury. Wrath is available for Deathwalker as well. This is going to be a fairly easy secure, and there it is. Sprint not even needed. The disengage clean again from Cyclone. So many adjustments made in this game, and this has been back and forth, neck and neck, 5K goldie, but at 33 minutes, that's not that much. This is a dead 
even game. I love the play coming out from Cyclone right now. Cringe Crew expected to come in and win this game, especially after taking a game off of both Energy and Obey yesterday. I think a lot of people were really high on them, and deservedly so, but Cyclone coming out and showing why everyone was talking about them before this land. There were a lot of rumblings. Oh, oh Zero is into the back. He's knocked up. The Fearless was canceled out, and Cringe Crew are trying to run away, but the knock up. The Vulcan ult off the mark, but Zero's, he got pulled back with ice, had to run away, and now Cyclone are chasing him down. I think he pulled him out of the Vulcan ult. That's so unfortunate. Amelzy just doing as much CC as he can, trying to keep everyone out. Now Repikos blinks back in, but taunted immediately. The Crush going to do a lot of damage to, Car er, to Kalos. There's the, the monster. Got the reset. Three lined up, and he is going to miss again, and it's trouble ice! Straight through, finds two. Cyclone trying to chase down Amelzy as well. He's so low. Zeros has rotated back in with his teleport. Amelzy's just trying to run away, but he's got three right behind him. Nowhere to go. Ice Ice Baby with a huge Absolutely play in the insane. middle lane. And by the way, I got to give shout outs to my man Transonics. Vote NBK throwing him some shout outs as well with the Fatalis Gibalanke chasing down Zeros. Uh, he's really chasing him down, but Repikos going to make it hard for him. This time, though, Cyclone's got the team in his back pocket. I think that was, was that Magi's from Repikos or was that he Purification? Just, he, he used Purification. He didn't know Ice's ult was down. Even if it is up, you can still purify as soon as you see that sort of mm -hmm. uh, marker come up on you. That's Repikos feeling a little bit uncomfortable right now. I mean, that's a guy who's been this, he was in the finals of season one worlds, but the way, all five Cy games. Exactly, with the way Cyclone's playing, I think they've got Cy Cringe Crew a little nervous and deservedly I, so. I, I'll tell you. All the bottom seeds, I mean, outside of Sanguine, but I considered kind of elevate that bottom seed in Group A. They looked so much better in their transition into Day 2. Yes. Every one of them had really rough Day 1s, 0-4, but Day 2, they always found a win. And Cyclone might find more than a win. I mean, this has been such a phenomenal game played by them. Really great game coming out of Ice as well. Voting BK, he's fixed a lot of his issues from day one. Still doesn't have a kill, but that doesn't really matter. He's been in all the right spots. And look at the damage from Wolfie. I mean, he's <laughs> absurd. Been unbelievable this game only on one death with this sort of dive composition that cringe crew have look at all the cc he goes to magi's blessing third item when just trying to stay alive and he's done it perfectly he's got thirty-one thousand damage the next highest is vote and he's not even at twenty thousand. honestly we haven't even seen big ultimates connected by Wolfie. Sometimes well, we have big single target ones, but... We almost did right there, almost. but Ice pulled Zeros yeah. back out. That was so unfortunate. That Usually it's your jungler and you <laughs> setting up for each other. And, oh, great play, man. But it's like, great, Ice, great why, pull. man? Fire Giant, though, going to be pointing contention. We're 36 minutes into this one. Back and forth nonstop. But Cyclone finally have a little bit of an edge with the gold lead. Almost everyone close to full build. I mean, if this holds out for another four minutes, there is n there's no advantage to, to either team. Well, the advantage right now is in Cyclone's favor just because they've got, no, they've got almost every tower down and the Phoenix, like you mentioned. So they're going to be able to win this game off of a closer fight than, say, Cringe Crew would. Cringe Crew would have to de-assign everyone and have five up in order to push the Titan, whereas Cyclone probably wouldn't need to. This is the first time we've seen Cyclone on the aggressive, though, for the most part. A lot of this game has then been reacting to what Cringe Crew has done now it's their time. We'll see if they can take this fight. Let's listen into Cyclone as they prepare for this potentially last engagement. Yeah, I'm up like Back up a bit, back up a bit. I'm behind. Wait for next stun. Wait for next stun. Uh, I'm not in a great position. I stopped here, Blake. Fuck Chella, fuck Chella, fuck Chella. I zoned out. Careful, careful, careful. We can get back, we can get back. We can get back, we can get back. Do you have I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. 
They might be back in Q. Yo, we can just follow follow me, follow follow me. Follow we can just the fire. The fire, the fire. We can just the fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good, so good. Let, let's start, let's start, let's start. Let's start. I'll set you here. It's 14k, 13. It's free, it's free, it's free, it's free. 10k. Yeah, we got it, we got it. 9. Just don't let them get it. But where's, where's that one key? No, no, it's fine. No one's here. No one's here. No one's here. No one's here. It's fine. It's fine. It's free. But it's now, but it's now, but it's now, but it's now. Back, 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 back. I got 10 minutes. Gold, bro. I don't know if they could understand each other. Sounded pretty chaotic to me. But what is happening in those calls? I man? actually I think love they it. do understand. You know when you have your yeah. disor like a really disorganized desk, but you mm. know where everything is and yes. no one else does. I think that's the case here. Perfect analogy. That's exactly what that was. Very funny to listen to, but it ends up working out. And you could see how the voices of reason start to come in. Ice wants to make that play, and it's you're alone, you're alone, you're alone, you're alone, you're alone. Very and tense. A a able to pull him back out. Awesome job getting that pick there. Wolfie just doing so much damage continually. Got another 7,000 damage in that engagement. Just positioning so well. And again at that tier two fight on the right hand side, it was Cringe Crew who forced it. The blink from Repikas. We've seen it now three or four times. His goal is to lock in Voting BK, but Voting BK just so good. He pops the Sanctuary immediately, doesn't even use his dash. He knows he's safe. Exactly. Just good patience overall. Here's Zeros. Zeros. Over the top. Rebby's going to blink in again. And now the engagement. Cringe Crew trying to force it. Zeros is chasing out. Vote MBK. But now Zeros is in a bad spot. Deathwalker is going to be forced to ult. A little bit scared of that damage coming out of Mealzy. And Ice finds the knockup. He pulled in a tank. It doesn't matter. The taunt, the flip as well. Zeros is so tanky, and it's going to be pretty healthy right now. But here comes Wolfie's ult, zoning him out, allowing Fody BK to find the shot. First stack there for the Gibalange, and it's a good time to get it. Now pushing down this Phoenix. Nice double root from Carol. Ice, Ice again. Blink in. He gets the purification. Almost kills Carol, but forces him out. That gives Cyclone a window of opportunity to knock down the middle Phoenix. Carol still has ult, though. Rod up to Hootie online. Almost a full build on this Scylla. He He's got to come up big right now. Repikosh is pushing forward. Going to trim her in place right now, but taking too much damage. He's got to reset. Voting BK is swinging like a truck right now onto this Phoenix. And there it is. Two down. Cyclone have full control of game one. Just one Phoenix remaining for Cringe Crew. They've got to defend it, but it looks like they're baiting. Cyclone I is still in the oh. jungle. He was oh. looking for the knockup. Didn't have the ult either Doesn't way. Matter. But it would have been really nice. Uh, uh, I, highlight over ice, actually, real quick. I want to see what that cooldown is. It's, it's up. just up. It's up now. Look at the cooldown that he's got. He's got the Hydras. He's got the Jotun's Wrath as well. Going to have a lot of cooldown reduction, able to use those abilities frequently. 30% out of the potential 40. I don't think he needs another 10 at this point. A very interesting build. Pretty hybrid coming out from him. He's not doing a ton of damage by himself. He's not the most tanky, but a lot of utility with that Winged Blade as well as the Magi's. Able to reposition very effectively with this build. The cooldown, the movement speed from the Winged Blade, like you mentioned. And he's got enough burst damage to, deal, to do what he wants to do, which is kill Carol. I feel like this is the annoying build, where it's just he's trying to be as annoying as possible, has a lot of high base damage, I think, just in that feather step, mm -hmm. uh, along with that ultimate gravity surge. I mean, that's a game changer if you can find someone without purification knocked up. Plus, a Willish, one of the best characters, along with one auto canceling your abilities and having that Hydra's pass to be able to refresh over and over and over again. I mean, it's like you jump in, Hydra's auto, feather step, Hydra's auto, knock up, Hydra's auto. It's cr absolutely crazy the kind of burst damage that you can do, and Carol's been melted because of it. Well, it's a pretty big gold lead, 13,000, but it doesn't mean much right now. Everyone on Cringe Crew full build outside of Emil Z, and that's not really that big of an issue. He's not the target. They're looking more for the carries. But Zilla has completed a Polynomicon, so trying to get some basics in right now. I really like the Polynomicon on Zilla. You can just, it's a guaranteed Over the auto. Soul Reaver? I would have preferred the Soul Reaver here, but we've seen Europe loves Polynomicon. Yeah. I mean, we saw Pretty Prime build it on Raijin. I mean, hey man. I don't I, I don't really get it overall. I think the Soul Reaver is still a much stronger item than Polynomicon on most characters. Scylla is one of the few that I really like Polynomicon on. It's basically her and Kakulkin that I think works well on. But uh, Soul Reaver probably the better pickup. Cyclone really trying to end this one right now. Phoenixes aren't respawning for a little bit. And it's only one remaining on the right-hand side. Something to note, too, Deathwalker, we didn't talk about it, but that Onsile picked up. That's mm -hmm. going to give him that silence if any mage hits him with an ability. And it's perfect against Kabraken because he can't follow up Chain Sun. He can't use the Tremors on you because he's silenced. Good pickup of an item we don't see a lot of but can be situationally powerful. This is a situation where it's powerful.
Fire Giant going to be respawning soon. Cyclone, do they, they do not want to throw. They're playing this so calculating, so safe right now. Uh, the, the Phoenixes aren't going to be respawning for uh, another minute and a half plus right now, which means this Fire Giant likely to be uncontested. But Cringe Crew has pushed up that wave on the left-hand side. That does give them a little bit of leeway if they want to force a fight on the FG. And here's the great thing for Cringe Crew is that you're still just waiting for I'm a Monster to make the big the game-changing We haven't play. seen it yet. We haven't seen it yet, but the potential is always there. Even if you've got two Phoenixes down, your Titan's exposed, one I'm a monster can change the course of this game. And it's going to be free. Cringe crew, they want to take their stand on their own Phoenixes. And Cyclone, I mean, they're, they're full build right now. There's going to be no waiting. They're going to go straight to that Phoenix on the right-hand side. They're going to have that Fire Giant region. And it's going to come down. I, I, like, I'm interested because still, I mean, we've seen Cyclone Siege, but it, it's still been Cringe Crew who have been the initiators on everything. First, it was Reppy going for vote MBK, then Zeros in, in those Phoenix fights where he would just alt over. Alt, alt right over the wall. For me, this fight's going to come down to whose mage ultimate does bar work. It's gonna, is it going to be Wolfie or is it going to be Kara with the I'm a monster? Well, 41k damage tells me it's Wolfie right now, almost doubling every player on Cringe Crew. They're playing this incredibly safe right now. The Phoenixes have respawned, and I don't think they're going for the right yet. They, they just want to make sure to knock these weakened ones down. They don't want to hesitate. Deathwalker and Kallus sitting in the front line. You can see Kallus also has his dash charged. He's looking for any opportunity for one person to be out of position. This will be Cyclone's first game, and it's going to, I mean, they, Obey are loving this right now. They've got to They've got to love it, because after that 2-0, they just got handed by Energy. They need a little bit of help with the first day that they had, and this would be the help that they're looking for. It's them up against Cringe Crew right now for the second seed. Who's going to be able to take it? Cyclone's trying to make it so it's not Cringe Crew. Well, Ice is just going to get a free Phoenix on the left there. Cringe Crew don't want to defend that one. They're actually going to force a fight in the middle. Deathwalker so low. Wolfie connects his ult, but a tanky target. Target. Zeros is going to ult away right now, but those two Phoenixes are down. That Fire Giant region right now for Cyclone paying off. And now it's two Phoenixes like you mentioned, but that's a huge ult down now that Vulcan doesn't have it. Caro still has his. There's the blink in from Reppy. He's Caro. looking for Vulcan. There's the ult, but it's off, off the, the mark. mark. Twice now. And now Ice, he went a little bit too deep. Reppy does open up this fight with the first kill. Vody BK running away too. His basics aren't enough. Zeros tracing him down. One more hit. The life steal from Aussie keeping him alive, but not long enough. Enough and Cringe Crew have held. Now it's going to be Deathwalker going to be the last one to fall here for Cyclone. Everyone else just running away as best they can. The fight just didn't go well there. The initiation on the vote that time just bought enough time for Ice to get baited in and die immediately in the back line. Blew the purification, but it didn't even matter. Yeah. Just a little bit too deep. Went in before his teammates can step up, and you saw the crits coming out from Shaggy Shank. Perfect job by him. Look at him. He's full health right now. Was able to dash in. He was trading autos with Vote NBK, but because he has the crits and Vote doesn't, he, and he's got a lot of crits right yeah. now. Triple crit online for Shaggy. Plus, don't forget about the explosive volts. Going to help him even more. He's going to be throwing out that big damage, and he was able to out-trade the enemy ADC. I mean, he even has a attack speed boots online, so, I mean, his autos are coming out often. You can see right now uh, 1.93. I mean, that's a that's not the highest attack speed that you're going to see late game, but, I mean, for the damage the hits are doing. Well, that's before he knocks himself up with the gust and gives him that true. bonus attack speed, and that's going to make uh, – he'll probably be capped right there. We'll have to ask Adaraxia. He's the resident Jing Wei expert. <laughs> well, Cyclone, uh, I mean, they got to be thanking their lucky stars a little bit there. They held off – Cringe Crew from taking any of their Tier 2 towers. Uh, and, and a lot of other scenarios there, if you get wiped as a, as a team all at the same time, Cringe Crew could have just walked in and won that game. But because they had to go through those towers, that is going to extend this game. We are almost 47 minutes into this one. And there has, I mean, that, that was the biggest lead we saw there, was with that Fire Giant, Cyclone had it, but still Cringe Crew were full build. It wasn't like they were in any weakened state. And that's what you have to be telling yourself if you're on Cyclone, is that we didn't lose anything there. We lost a Tier 2 tower, basically, and who cares? I mean, everyone's full build. Everyone's buying power potions. See, Shaggy Shank actually has an elixir of power, the 3K pot that's going to help him a lot. Uh, it doesn't really matter that you lose those Tier 2 towers, so just reset. You've gotten a lead in this mm -hmm. game for a reason. Let's just continue to fight the way we've been fighting, and we'll be fine. And uh, Wolfie there, I mean, he, he's been connecting all, uh, his ultimates, but a lot of times it's on to zeros. I mean, that tier is, is pretty dang tanky, and so he's had a lot of trouble. We haven't seen those ults connect onto any carries in the last couple fights in, the, in probably the past 10 minutes, but Cyclone, they're going to go for it again. Fire Giant has fallen off of all of them now. Wolfie did have it for a little bit, but it seems 
teams like Cyclone don't want to test the waters just yet. They still have those fire minions in the mid and the left-hand side. They're totally content with waiting for this next fire giant. It's going to spawn in the next 40 seconds, and they can group up and take it probably for free again. In fact, they want Cringe Crew to come and contest this most likely because now that you've won a fight, if you're Cringe Crew, you might get to feeling a little confident. Yeah, they had fire giant. We still won. Let's take the fight to them whenever they don't have fire giant at the at objective. But you had your Phoenix helping you out there. You had the positioning mm -hmm. helping you out. It, there's nowhere for them to run if you start to win that team fight. So overall, I would like to see Cringe Crew give this Fire Giant up still. You la you won the last fight when they had it. No reason to take the oh, fight in an non-advantageous position. That call is always so hard. Give up a Fire Giant. I mean, I know you know it's a late game scenario, but their Phoenixes are about to respawn. I think they're going to listen to you, though. They do have three in mid. And they do have zeros in right-hand side, but Shaggy Shank's on the wrong side of the map. There's absolutely no way he's going to be able to get here. But the call from Cringe Crew is to defend. They're not going to give this up for free. Reppy already there, looking to stun out Deathwalker. Cringe Crew, they stop the uh, Fire Giant from being attempted. It is reset. And Cyclone, vote MBK, burn to that ultimate. Definitely want that for this fight. With Darkest of Nights is the most annoying ultimate to fight into during a team fight. It, it just completely negates your overall feeling for the game a lot of the time. You can't tell exactly what's happening. So that being down makes this engage by Cringe Crew significantly easier. And, and look at what's happened as well. We saw Cringe Crew. I mean, uh, it's very rare to see a team that's lost two Phoenixes be able to push those wave up, waves up so far into the lane without anyone looking to contest them or, or you know, even push it back a little bit. And so Cringe Crew don't have to worry about their Phoenixes. I mean, the minions that are spawning are going to be able to deal with those final fire waves. I mean, this is the advantage that Cyclone had is gone. Now, you've got two Phoenixes exposed for Cyclone. Cringe Crew, if they're able to win a fight cleanly, are going to be able to end the game. Still the same sort of scenario for Cyclone, but that advantage of having a Phoenix down while having the towers up has com completely been negated because of the stalling tactics from Cringe Crew. And you see Vote NBK continues to pull his Fire Giant and still has the Elixir of Power and the Red Pot available to him, not popping either of those. He's going to wait until the engage really starts in full. Uh, he, should, he should probably, I, I would imagine in the next five minutes, something will happen. But holding on to them, he, makes, he needs to make sure not to have those in his inventory when he f uh, throws his, his first auto attack. And he's going to start up the Fire Giant. Still hasn't popped the potions just yet, surprisingly enough. Yeah, a little bit too patient for my life. I would really rather have seen him go for that Repikos sitting in the back, waiting to go for that Blink Initiation that's been so sometimes successful for Cringe Girls. I was going to say so successful. Zeros. There's the Blink Initiation from Zeros going in on Collis. He's going to get knocked up, but not enough damage. Deathwalker in the back line as well. Two of the front lines for Cyclone poked out. They got the ultimate from Deathwalker. Wolfie by what himself. Is what is he doing? Magi's is going to save him for now. Trying to reset and vote MBK's ult is back up. Reppy pulled into the team, but that's a very tanky Kabrakian and Zeros over the wall. Trying to chase Ice out right now, but with the sprint popped, solid disengage from Cyclone. Cyclone just had to give that up. Wolfie We've been talking about how great his positioning was all game. Until there. And at 50 minutes is not the time to have a lapse in judgment. It looks like the left Phoenix is going to fall right now. Cringe Crew getting pressured by that Phoenix. Fire but Collis gets juggled into the fire He's still giant. in the air, but there's the ultimate from Wolfie. It finds three. Cringe Crew are so low right now, and Caro misses his ult. Let's listen into Cyclone, see if they want to keep up this chase. Wait, 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 wait. We don't have wards. It's all good. We have wards. Just get 40%, 40%. He's coming careful, in. Careful, careful, he's coming in. You say, don't, 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 Okay, we're healing up now. Let no, me, no, let no, me, no, let no, me go. No, stay no, no, stay with us, stay with us. Right, right, right. Better, better, I don't have, I don't have anything. Right, right, I don't have right. actives. Ten, we have the turret for mid. I don't have actives. Yeah, we're just, I'm just, ulting 20, by the way. Okay, okay. We, we should probably wait, take wait, wait. three things. Wait, wait, wait. When is Shibala killed? When is Shibala killed? Five, 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 five. Sorry, boys. Five, okay. Two, one. Okay, I'll look for Jingwei. I got Jingwei, got Jingwei, got Jingwei. I'm on Vings, 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 on
Took him uh, 52, almost 53 minutes, but Cyclone find their first win in Group C. It was a, a little bit rough. It was very tiring, but they have come out on top. Rough spot for Cringe Crew now, and Obey are loving it. Back and forth contestion there. Cyclone able to pull it out over the double C. The single C wins this matchup. And like you mentioned, Obey's got to be loving it. You can see Cringe Crew. They know that they had a great chance to get off on the right foot here after splitting with the two top teams. Yesterday, they just had to take care of business here against Cyclone. And losing this first game's got to be I mean, tough. a lot of it was them not being able to convert those picks. Repikos always had uh, basically the perfect engage with those br uh, blink, Kabracken walls, zoning off, uh, you know, Callus or some other member that was isolated from their teams, but they just weren't able to finish them off. And those extended fights always started leaning back into Cyclone's favor. It just seemed like a little bit of hesitation and or miscommunication on the side of Cringe Crew yeah. there. Caro sometimes holding his ultimate far too long. Repikos sometimes blinking way past everyone else to get an initiation that no one could follow up on. But overall, the positioning from Wolfie, the big play capabilities from Ice, and then Vote just being the bait. Just everyone knows that he likes to be a little bit too aggressive. Cringe Crew tried to punish it, but Cyclone take advantage. Well, that was a very long game and a lot to break down. Hindu and the boys, what happened? Thanks so much, Casters. Very interesting game there that took place between the two. And as you can see on your screen here, obviously, we've got the boys of Cyclone, uh, sorry, Cringe Crew, I should say. And after all the work they put in yesterday, Tolly, to take on the top two teams in this group, they're not going to be happy about this first game. No, not at all. The timing of seconds to go off is just going to shut down Cringe Crew. They felt probably really happy after the results in mm. the first game. So to come in to the first game of this set and drop it against Cyclone, not very good for the morale heading into game two. That's Coach Dethians right there in the in the middle, the uh, the big guy with the chin strap. And he uh, he just looks very disappointed at the end of the day. Mm. Uh, Dethians is one of the more hands-on coaches here. He sits there in the front row with his notebook. Nobody, He doesn't talk to nobody. He he watches the team very intently, and he when you when you see him watch the team, you like feel him feel it. And I know after a game like that, he's just like, "Come on, guys, you're better than that." I mean, overall, there we saw the performance out of these guys, and it was a pretty good game between the two. Good start for Cringe Crew, but Cairo didn't really find the mark very often early on. A lot of missed ultimates. I mean, they did find the kills eventually, but then it forced him longer to get that. It took a little bit too long for Cairo to really get online. I would say he was a little bit inconsistent with his ultimates, like you mentioned earlier stages. But once he started hitting them, and it started started rolling for Cringe Crew. They found some objectives later on, but it was actually Wolfie on the Vulcan that it was doing so much damage. Yeah, Wolfie did a lot of work there. And just adding a little bit more to Kero as well. I mean, you can see some of the plays that he did here. He's blind all in a lot of times, trying to make it happen. The, obviously, the, we didn't see it from his eyes all the time, so that Jubilon kill I mean, does make an impact there after. Yeah, that was a little bit unfair. It was uh, the one, kill no. snatched away for, out from under him, but the rest of these absolutely uh, are illustrative of just Kiro just off the money there. You get one. Hooray, that's good for you. you know? But that's that has to happen. Look at the time. It's 19 and a half. That has to happen at nine minutes. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, you also you mentioned Wolfie there, and you saw him get a kill in that one as well. I mean, Wolfie had a fantastic game in that mid lane. But a lot for me came down to Ice Ice Baby again in the jungle, making things happen once more. It was a great counter pick strategy, trying to shut down Kiro. Obviously, you know, Willage doing a great job, not allowing the Scylla to really use that Sentinel to get away. He had to make a conscious decision decision between whether he uses his ultimate to get away or whether or not he pops an early sanctuary and that's a huge reason as to why Wolfie has a huge gap in player damage against Kiro. And here's some of the plays you can see out of Ice Ice Baby here. I mean for the most part look what he does every time Tom. He's going for the back line. I mean this is one of the guys that has really stepped up for Cyclone. I don't think that a lot of players on here are mechanically gifted but I think Ice Ice is one of those guys. Unfortunately on these picks like a wheelish and stuff, he's not putting himself in a position, or rather, maybe the team isn't allowing him to put himself in a position to really run the game. Mm. A wheelish is a sort of mid-game carry. It's not going to be that Thor, that Al Kwong, that can really just be like, all right, I'm here. I'm going to lift the team up and carry it. A wheelish has a tr has a kind of troublesome time doing that as the game gets later and later. I'm talking about getting later and later. That's exactly what happened here with the boys of Cyclone up against Cringe Crew. Cyclone took a long time to end those games, Tolly. Listen to the communication from those teams. It was clear that Cyclone had some issues with who the hell was in charge in the late game of 
What are we going to do? It seemed that there was three different voices doing three different calls for a Cyclone. They need to figure out the one person to make the end game calls, to make comms a little bit more fluid and crystal mm. clear. They have the mechanical skill, the talent, the confidence. We saw it yesterday, despite not finding a single win. They have the confidence. Following up on that, though, Tommy, I mean, do you really need just one person on comms to be a leader? Or everyone can talk as long as everybody just listens to one person, right? Well, we have a bunch, we have a bunch of different uh, strategies that different teams go by. I know when you listen to Team Eager, it's e it's uh, both DJ and Zatman. When you look at Pain to Beyond and Enemy, it's one man controlling everything. And then when you look at teams like Orbit, it's more of a cacophony and everybody just sort of follows in suit. But at the end of the day, whatever the call is, y'all got to commit to it, right? Three people doing two different calls is never going to be right. If you get five people and you commit to the wrong call, that might wind up as the right call. Otherwise, you wind up taking 60 minutes to finish a 40-minute game like we just watched. Very, very true indeed there. If you all played at home, watching at home, though, and you're going to play some Smite at the end of today, don't forget we do have Face It now bringing you some more matchmaking options for yourselves as well. You can compete in dozens of tournaments every day to win gems and take them away from Tolly. Yeah, definitely yeah. want to take away my five gems that are in a weekend. But yeah, you could definitely see a lot of streamers that also try to get involved in the community. It's a great idea to try to, you know, play some games with a streamer that you like. Yeah, and also prove that matchmaking is the same wherever you go. That's my point of view of it anyway. In the grand scheme of things.